It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. A favorite talking point of those who support the Trump administration's policies towards Venezuela is that 50 countries have recognized the opposition leader Juan Guaido as the interim president of Venezuela. And this includes um, countries like Canada and Europe. So people are very confused. When it is pointed out that 50 out of the 195 countries is only about one-fourth of the world's countries and less than 20 percent of the world's population, the Trump administration argues that these are the world's main democracies that support Guaido. Part of the reason for assembling this coalition of countries that are willing to recognize the parallel government in Venezuela is to provide legitimacy to the Trump administration's effort to oust Nicolas Maduro, the elected president of Venezuela. In some ways, this is similar to the coalition of the willing that President George W. Bush assembled to oust Saddam Hussein from Iraq. But who is this anti-Maduro coalition of the willing? And why are they supporting Trump? Well, to discuss all of this with me today, I'm joined by Mark Weisbrot, um, and he's joining us from Washington, D.C., where he is the co-director of the Center for Economic and Policy Research. Thanks for joining us, Mark. Thanks for inviting me, Sharmini. All right, Mark, uh, let's start off with this Trump's... Uh, uh, main allies in this effort uh, in Venezuela, particularly the Latin American uh, allies, Colombia, Brazil, Argentina, Chile, Ecuador, Paraguay, uh, among others. But most of these governments have their own issues of legitimacy, particularly Brazil. Tell us about some of them and why are they allied with Trump, Bolton, Pompeo, Pence and group? Yes. Well, first, I want to emphasize that even if these were the most wonderful governments in the world, there's no legitimacy to the effort to overthrow uh, uh, the Venezuelan government. And that's because, first of all, the sanctions that they're using are illegal. They're illegal under the Charter of the Organization of American States. They're illegal under the Charter of the United Nations. And they're illegal under various uh, conventions that these countries and the United States in particular have signed. So it wouldn't be legitimate even if they had only the best uh, countries and even if they had a majority of countries. It's just it's just illegal. And of course, it's immoral because they're using collective punishment against the population of Venezuela by depriving them of medicine and food and other essential goods. So. But they still, they use this anyway. So it is kind of worth looking at the coalition. And as you said, why, you know, who is it and why? So obviously you have some countries that are have their own problems of legitimacy. The government of Brazil, uh, which is headed by Jair Bolsonaro, uh, he came to power in an election that was of questionable legitimacy because they excluded the most popular uh, politician in Brazil, uh, Lula da Silva, the former president, and they put him in jail uh, so he couldn't run. Well, they also made a separate court decision that he couldn't run uh, from jail. But he was jailed and convicted without any real material evidence uh, against him. It was all based on one uh, plea bargain. The whole case was based on one plea bargained witness who uh, was convicted of uh, corruption and his plea bargaining was cut off until he changed his story and supported the investigating uh, prosecuting judges uh, view in what he wanted. So that was very questionable. And then they prevented Lula from speaking to the media. And of course, they wouldn't have even gotten rid of the workers party, Lula's uh, party. Uh, and had this opportunity if they hadn't impeached uh, Dilma, uh, Dilma Rousseff, the president from the Workers' Party. In 2015 and 16, they proceeded against her with an impeachment that didn't actually have a, a real crime. 